All right, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you again to Dr. Min for inviting us all out here for this uh, presentation or series of presentations. Um, I've learned a lot already. Um, just as a quick side note, uh, um, I spent part of 2015 in Southern California on this project on Asian American Catholics. And I can verify what Dr. Min was just pointing out about the inter interesting things that are happening in Korean Catholic parishes in the United States, which are actually different from the way Chinese and Japanese uh, Catholics in the United States have been organizing. So I didn't realize this until I actually spoke with uh, some uh, Catholic leaders. Uh, dioceses in Korea are bringing their priests over into Catholic parishes that are Korean in the United States. And basically, um, it's treated as a five-year sojourn <laughs> for these priests. And then they go back. So these parishes basically work as these bubbles within a larger parish or diocese system that's supposed to be cooperative. So. Uh, try to imagine a situation where you have white parishes, uh, uh, Mexican parishes, uh, black parishes, Vietnamese parishes, Filipino parishes. They're all supposed to be doing things together, and they're all supposed to be trading their priests together, but the Korean uh, parishes stick to themselves, and they don't actually communicate with anyone else. So it creates a very different dynamic uh, when you think about um, how does uh, uh, Catholicism work among these different Asian groups. Uh, what I wanted to share with you today is uh, uh, a research trajectory I was interested in pursuing after uh, working on a project on how do uh, Muslim Americans think about uh, discrimination and what uh, factors are associated with perceiving greater discrimination in their lives. Uh, so this got me to thinking about, well, what are some of the general th uh, theories that we know about how uh, religion is related to experiences of discrimination? When we think about uh, research, uh, the predominant research in this area, it's mainly focused on how uh, white Americans typically think about uh, discriminating towards uh, racial minorities and usually sexual minorities. And most of this research, um, if I could just pare it down very quickly, uh, basically finds when you have a more fundamentalist uh, Protestant religious orientation that is uh, a religion that says uh, my religion is the, the best way or, or the only way to truth, um, and uh, nobody else has any claims to these kinds of truth. This tends to intensify greater prejudice towards racial minorities and sexual minorities, and then this results in discrimination. So I wanted to see, well, what does this mean, though, for those that are recipients of that discrimination? And the uh, short summary of a fairly small body of literature that uh, looks uh, into this uh, actually builds on what uh, Dr. Park was talking about on uh, Buddhism and coping. Uh, apparently, most of the research on how religion is related to racial discrimination from the recipient side of that discrimination is mainly about uh, coping with the anxiety and the depression um, and the upset feelings that one experiences uh, after they've been discriminated against. So religion typically f uh, turns into a study of coping, and uh, religion becomes one means of that sort of coping. So I wanted to go in a completely different direction and uh, building off uh, largely inspired from a lot of uh, uh, Dr. Min's historic work on so many different aspects about uh, Korean American uh, religion. So what I wanted to understand uh, better was the psychological literature says that it's, it's one thing for somebody to say, I've been treated unfairly in a day-to-day -day experience. It's a different thing to ask, have I experienced this because that person thinks I'm a racial minority and uh, that's the reason why they uh, treated me unfairly. It could have been that they treated me unfairly because uh, I'm a, uh, a gendered person or because uh, I'm a, a different sexual orientation. Why does somebody actually think that this discrimination is related to their race as opposed to some other kind of identity? That brings into uh, the conversation the literature on ethnic attachment. As Dr. Min has pointed out, in the Korean American case especially, ethnic attachment is highly uh, connected to religious institutional participation. When you're in a Korean church, you're amplifying your understanding of who you are as a Korean individual because you're surrounded by other people who are Korean. Um, and as Dr. Min has also pointed out, the uh, sort of ironic deficit is that uh, somehow this uh, switches over into uh, amplifying a religious identity for the second generation. So we're going to uh, um, talk about that very briefly uh, in a couple minutes. So uh, when you are part of a, um, uh, well, I'm sorry, another strand of this uh, research on uh, what other effects are related to uh, racial bias and discrimination are homogenous ethnic networks. So similar to the concept of being a part of an immigrant uh, religious uh, congregation where everybody is like you. If you are simply in a network of people that are uh, like you in terms of your racial background, you're more likely to think that your racial background is important. Therefore, you're more likely to say that I've uh, experienced racial discrimination. 
And so we can combine these two together and talk about whether or not there are religio-ethnic um, attachments and networks out there. And that's the focus of what this particular paper is about. So uh, in quick summary, most of the research out there on uh, race in US congregations basically points to a general principle of homogeneity in, on racial terms. Uh, the majority of US congregations, even as of 2014, are still majority single race. So uh, by single race, we mean 80% or more of the congregation is one particular racial background or another. So uh, racial homogeneity is part and par for the course for uh, US uh, Christian congregations. In previous research uh, I did back in 2012 and 2013, I noticed that among second generation Korean Protestants, a curious uh, insularity in their social networks. Um, unlike other Asian Americans of the same uh, religious backgrounds, uh, second generation Korean Americans seem to be uh, more likely to have very insular networks, that is mainly Asian or even uh, almost exclusively Korean uh, uh, racial friendship networks compared to other uh, Koreans and to um, other second generation uh, religious individuals. Um, this is a lot, so don't be overwhelmed by it. But uh, when I was working on that paper on anti-Muslim discrimination, uh, these were all the different characteristics I found that were related to how one actually perceives uh, that racial discrimination. Uh, context matters, obviously. There are social determinants. And in those social determinants, uh, we're going to focus specifically on that one area, uh, what we describe in social psychological terms as in-group commitment. So to what extent uh, are you, is your ethnic attachment associated with simply just being around a lot of people that are like you racially? So uh, why the Korean American case and why be a part of this particular uh, session? Um, as mentioned before, there's a lot of ethnic homogeneity when we look at uh, immigrant Protestant Korean churches, as uh, is true with every immigrant uh, church or congregation or temple in the United States. Most, pe most of these uh, institutions or organizations basically are uh, comprised of people that are of the same ethnicity and typically the same racial background. For the second generation Protestant Korean case, uh, as I mentioned before too, there's this uh, whole matter of insularity and we haven't investigated whether or not there's some uh, relationship to racial bias attribution to discrimination. So I followed the uh, Pew Asian American survey which was conducted back in 2012 uh, it's supposed to be the, uh, probably the best, uh, most expensive representative sample of Asian Americans with translations into seven different languages. Uh, one of the primary key differences of uh, this survey compared to almost any other survey of its kind. So we had a sample of about 3,500 uh, Asian Americans, uh, 504 of whom identified as Korean American. Uh, as this builds off of some of the other presentations today, some important uh, background problems to identify and uh, something for us to be thinking about as a, a community of researchers. Uh, out of 504 randomly selected uh, representative sample of Korean Americans around the United States, they were only able to get 62 who identified as Catholic and only 21 who identified as Buddhist. When I split this out by generation, only four, four out of 504 respondents were second generation and identified as Catholic. Only three were second generation and identified as Buddhist out of 504 respondents. So when you have samples uh, that small, uh, you can't make any statistical estimations of anything. Uh, so whenever, when I show you the next set of slides, uh, which are gonna be a different uh, series of bar figures, um, uh, yeah, please keep all this in mind, especially when you're looking at second generation figures for Buddhists and Catholics. Those numbers are probably uh, highly inflated and uh, prone to significant error. So the main dependent variable that I wanted to look at was perceived racial discrimination, and the Pew survey uh, uh, includes this in two different ways. They asked respondents over the telephone, during the past 12 months, have you personally experienced discrimination or been treated unfairly because you are your ethnic background or Asian if the person didn't uh, specify a specific Asian background? So their answers were either yes or no, or some, some, uh, some people said, I don't know. And then they asked, and during the past 12 months, have you been called offensive names because you are Asian uh, American or not? Again, yes or no. So in the following uh, uh, slides, when you look at the figures, I basically combine anybody who said, um, I've experienced at least one of these uh, as one category, and then everybody else who said, no, I've never experienced any of this, or I don't know if I've experienced it at all, as the uh, con uh, comparison uh, category. Uh, by way of quick uh, explanation, when I talk about immigrants here, I'm talking about respondents who said, uh, I was not born in the United States and I arrived after the age of 12. Uh, 
I combined everybody who said I was uh, born in another country and um, arrived before the age of uh, 13, and those that said I was US born into one category as uh, 1.5 and second generation. For uh, racially homogenous networks, uh, the Pew survey asked uh, two particular questions about uh, their racial composition. Uh, how many folks uh, in your friendship networks are uh, of your same ethnic background, and how many of your uh, friends are of different racial backgrounds? So I combined these together into the following two uh, grouped categories. All respondents who said that uh, every one of my friends are of the same ethnic group, or most or all of them are Asian, compared to the contrast category of uh, my friends are largely uh, racially mixed, or I have few to no Asian friends at all. Uh, in terms of uh, pro uh, religious affiliations, again, uh, these are the standard ones that you'll see in the Pew Asian American survey, um, and we won't go into any great detail on that. And as uh, Dr. Min has just shown, the majority of religions uh, or religious backgrounds that people will often report among Korean Americans are the following. Protestant Christians, Catholics, Buddhists, and those who identify with no religion or say that they are agnostic or atheist. Okay, so uh, here, here's the, the big payoff. This is what we found. When you look at the uh, Pew Asian American survey and uh, we compare all of our um, Asian ethnic groups together, uh, who exactly experienced uh, some discrimination in the past 12 months? Uh, what you can see here is, uh, number one, uh, it's, this is not a minor problem. It's not like only 5% of any particular group has uh, uh, experienced discrimination. Fairly substantial uh, minorities of different Asian ethnic groups have experienced discrimination in the past 12 months. By comparison, African Americans uh, in the latest survey, uh, something like nearly 50% of African Americans have experienced discrimination in the past 30 days. So. Um, uh, these, report, these figures are much lower than uh, the experience of African Americans, but they're pretty substantial, um, and I think we would all agree with that. With the exception of uh, Japanese Americans, almost every group uh, experiences about one out of five folks will say that they've experienced discrimination in the past year. I believe the Japanese American figures uh, largely result of uh, multiple generations, like third and fourth generation Japanese Americans, who are probably more, more or less assimilated to American society. Okay. So what does this mean in terms of religion? We uh, asked that same question and we just examined all the Asian Americans based off of their religious backgrounds. We find very little variation there again. Uh, interestingly, at the low end, we have 15% of Hindu Americans that would say that they've experienced discrimination. And on the high end, uh, those who have no religion uh, or those who are Catholic at 21% saying that they've experienced uh, some discrimination. All right, now what happens when we uh, take that discrimination question and divide it out by uh, their um, uh, generational background and their uh, um, uh, ethnic background. We find a very interesting pattern here with uh, one minor exception. Almost every group, the second generation actually has a higher proportion reporting discrimination compared to the first generation. This was surprising to me because I was sort of expecting it to be the opposite, uh, but it's actually uh, not the case. The second generation tends to experience or report racial discrimination much more with the one exception of Filipino Americans. Um, sociologist Anthony Ocampo, I think, has a great explanation for this. Uh, the way they understand race, uh, the way Filipino Americans think about race is actually very different from the way other Asian Americans think about race as well. So maybe that uh, racial fluidity has something to do with uh, differences in perceptions of discrimination. Also, uh, take with caution the figure on Indian Americans. The second generation is actually very hard to find among Indian Americans, uh, even in a large random sample of uh, South Asian Indians. Uh, apparently, the vast majority, uh, like beyond 75% of the sample, is actually first generation exclusively. Okay, uh, now let's turn to the question about uh, uh, racialized networks or homogenous networks. So remember I told you that um, I combined everybody who said most of my friends are the same ethnicity or of the same uh, Asian background. And this is what we get when we divide them out by uh, generation and by ethnicity. Korean Americans stand out, especially in the first generation, for having very homogenous networks. 42% of first generation Korean Americans in the sample said all or most of my friends are uh, Korean or mostly Asian. Right? That's higher than any other of the uh, surveyed first generation groups. But interestingly, when you look at the second generation of Korean Americans, their rate of uh, homogenous networks is actually fairly low and pretty much on par with all the other second generation respondents. Uh, now, I've, I've 
since uh, Protestantism is the dominant religion among uh, uh, Korean Americans, I wanted to see, well, what happens if we looked at just the Protestants uh, who are Asian American and see what those patterns look like? And nothing changes for the most part, especially when we look at the Korean American case. 45% of first generation Korean Protestants uh, have the same uh, uh, racialized networks, but only about 20% of um, second generation Korean Protestants have uh, exclusive or insular networks. All right, so now let's focus on the Korean American case. What does this mean if we were to divide out um, all the different religious groups among Korean Americans uh, and whether or not they uh, experience discrimination? There's not a, a whole lot of variation with the one exception of which I don't have any, ex uh, any explanation for. 14% of the few Buddhists that we were able to uh, survey in that, um, in that uh, data set uh, said that they experienced discrimination in the past year compared to about 21 to 26 percent of uh, Catholics uh, and agnostics experiencing the same thing. Uh, when we look at this uh, by um, dividing it up by uh, uh, generation, uh, Protestant Christians, whether they're first or second generation, are roughly about in the same zone. Um, we can't say a whole lot about the Buddhists or the Catholic figures because, again, the second generation figures, the ones in the red, are uh, not reliable figures to work with. But nevertheless, the main point is for the Protestant Christians, there's not a whole lot of difference by generation. So here's the final takeaway then. When we look at uh, first generation and second generation Korean Americans and we focus on who's got uh, highly insular networks versus people who have more mixed networks, a surprising uh, fa um, uh, finding comes out that I, I wasn't expecting. When you look at the second generation, uh, those Protestants that have the same, uh, have uh, um, insular networks, right, mostly Korean friends or mostly Asian friends, only 8% of them have said that they've experienced racial discrimination in the past year compared to uh, first generation uh, Korean Protestants that have also similarly uh, uh, racially uh, insular friends, and compare that to those who have mixed or few Asian friends, first or second generation. This is a truly interesting finding, um, and I think warrants uh, some possible explanations, which I'll get to uh, right here. So by preliminary con uh, conclusions, uh, there is some pretty evident per uh, pervasive uh, perceived racial discrimination among Asian Americans and by Korean Americans in general. Uh, it's more, uh, more so among the second generation than the first generation. Uh, Korean immigrants exhibit higher uh, density, what we might call homophilous friendships, that is, uh, friendships of the same type of person, but only with second generation Korean Protestants do we find that those homophilous friendships are actually connected to lower perceived discrimination. I thought it was going to be higher, but it's actually lower. So um, I propose as a takeaway point that this might be an example of a benefit of actually being in these very insular networks. Basically, if these are your friends and you're always hanging out with your friends, you're going to be protected from experiencing discrimination. So that's just a hypothesis. For future direction, um, as I've uh, pointed out earlier, uh, if we could do some larger surveys of the Korean American population, it would be great if we could possibly do something like an oversampling of Catholic and Buddhist uh, Korean Americans so that we can actually do some of these more advanced uh, comparisons between groups. Um, secondly, if we can do some kind of an oversampling of the second generation in particular, uh, any given sample like this will only constitute something like 20 to 25 percent as 1.5 or second generation. And then for future uh, direction also, I'd love to see how this uh, plays out when we compare uh, these same patterns against Indian Hindus, uh, Filipino and Vietnamese Catholics, African American and white uh, Christians using a different survey data set. And uh, if anybody has any hypotheses or uh, access to data for these kinds of points, Hispanic Protestants and Catholics. Thank you very much.